Why do spokes break? Simply put, unless something gets jammed into your wheel, a well-built wheel should not break spokes. I'm Tristan from Wheelworks. In this video, we're going to look at the three failure points for spokes and what causes spokes to break at each of those points and what we can do to mitigate or eliminate these risks. We are so confident in our wheel building quality that we have a lifetime guarantee against broken spokes on all of our wheels, and I'll explain how we can offer this. We're also gonna answer some of your questions from previous videos, such as what to do if you do break a spoke while riding. So stick around. We're gonna start by looking at spokes breaking at their head, which is the part connected to the hub. The most common reason for spoke breakage at the head is poor wheel building quality. If the spoke tension is too low at the spoke head, it will flex too much and this will cause it to fail. This can either mean that the wheel wasn't correctly tensioned to begin with, or that the initial tension was uneven, with some spokes being too high, others being too low, and that the spoke tension has reduced over time. With high quality spokes, low tension spokes will generally break before high tension spokes, meaning the non-drive side of the rear wheel and the non-disc side of the front wheel. This is because if the tension is too low, these spokes are actually going slack, and spokes really don't like that. On low quality wheels, it's generally the high tension spokes which will break at the head because of the quality of the steel in the spoke just isn't enough to withstand the tension. Breakage at the head occurs on both J-bend and straight pull spokes. Counterintuitively, a thick, heavy spoke actually tends to increase the chance of breakage at the head, whereas a lightweight spoke reduces it. Think about the willow and the oak, where the lightweight, flexible spoke is able to blow in the breeze like the willow, whereas the heavy, stiff spoke is much more like the oak. Some other reasons spokes break at the head are spokes made with cheap steel, or with a longer than required J-bend. Neither of these points are relevant for our wheels, as they're generally cost-saving measures designed to reduce input costs or reduce production time. Spoke breakage at the head would almost certainly be a warranty issue, as we have full control over the quality of the spokes we use and of the wheel building and de-stressing processes that our wheels go through. So, how do we mitigate spoke breakage at the head? First, we use high quality DT Swiss spokes. We've tried all the brands and we found that DT Swiss produce the highest quality, most consistent spokes. We also tend to use double or triple butted spokes, not just because they have a lower chance of breakage, but because they produce better riding wheels. Second, we build with Grimlock. Grimlock is a pneumatic press which we've designed and built, which both overloads and de-stresses our wheels multiple times during the build process. Using our Grimlock ensures our wheels are at the correct spoke tension when they leave our workshop, and that they stay that way for the life, with no settling or retensioning required. Third, we use our dial hubs. There is a huge amount of work which has gone into the tiny details of the dial hub flanges to ensure they don't break spokes. The flanges are angled towards the rim, and the holes in the flanges are carefully shaped to provide full support of the spoke. We've laced tens of thousands of spokes into dial hubs, and because of these details, we've never had an unexplained spoke failure. Spoke breaking at the nipple. Spoke breakage and nipple breakage aren't the same thing, but they are often conflated. The only reason a spoke will break at the nipple is that the spoke length is incorrect. Generally, this would mean that the spoke is too long, although sometimes this will happen if the spoke is too short as well. The first thread of the spoke is one of its weakest points, so if the spoke is too long or too short, this weak point is left exposed. So, how do we mitigate spoke breakage at the nipple? First, the range of road, gravel, and mountain bike rims we design have the spoke nipple hole drilled so they point the spoke towards the hub flange. The easiest and most common way to drill nipple holes is like this, pointing all of the spokes to the very center of the rim, but we angle the spoke nipple holes both left to right and also front to back. This four axis drilling makes a massive difference in spoke and nipple durability as it reduces the bend at the highly stressed nipple area. Second, we go to painstaking lengths to ensure that our spoke lengths are correct. We use custom top secret digital tools to measure each and every rim and hub, and we calculate the spoke length for every wheel, even combinations that we've built before. We even take into account how much your spokes have stretched during the wheel build, 
which is about 0.8 millimeters on the drive side of your rear wheel, but only 0.4 millimeters on the non-disc side of your front wheel. For all bladed spoke wheels, we then cut the spokes to the exact length, accurate to 0.1 of a millimeter, before rolling on fresh threads. We keep track of all of this build information for every wheel we've ever built. So if you have any questions about spoke length or wheel build details, this video will explain how to find your wheel number so we can pass on those details. As with spokes breaking at the head, we have full control over all of the reasons why spokes break at the nipple. So this is 100% a warranty issue because it means that we didn't do our job correctly. Broken nipples are often confused with broken spokes, but have different breakage reasons. Nipples break for three reasons. The most common reason is that the spoke being too short. Even half a millimeter too short causes a problem as this leaves the nipple's head unsupported and it tends to pop the head off. Conversely, if the spokes are too long, then the nipple also gets stressed, which can cause it to break. However, this is pretty rare. Spoke nipples are either made of brass or aluminium. Brass is heavier and stronger, but aluminum is lighter and has the risk of corrosion. Corrosion is generally caused by tire sealant getting past the rim tape and entering the center section of the rim. There isn't a lot of airflow in there, so the sealant has nowhere to go and it attaches itself to the aluminum and starts eating it via galvanic corrosion. For various reasons, this tends to happen on rear wheels far more frequently than on front wheels. How do we mitigate broken nipples? Spoke length is critically important here. And as I said above, we go to fastidious levels of detail to ensure our spoke lengths are perfect on every wheel. Correct spoke tension and spoke pre-stressing is also super important. So using spoke tension meters, which are calibrated daily and pre-stressing with Grimlock really helps us to ensure every wheel is built perfectly. We also coat the spoke threads in a special grease and lubricate the contact area between the spoke nipple and the rim in another special grease to ensure the spokes and nipples are not damaged during the wheel building process and to prevent any galvanic corrosion. We use both aluminum and brass nipples depending on the type of wheel and its intended use. We'll often build the front wheel with aluminum nipples to save weight and the rear wheel with brass nipples to ensure longevity. So that leaves us with the final place spokes can break somewhere along their length between the head and the thread. There is only one reason why high quality spokes break along their middle section. Something got snagged in them. Sometimes that's your derailleur or sometimes it's a stick. Sometimes this damage causes the spoke to break instantly, but oftentimes only damages the spoke a little bit. And it's not until weeks later that the weakened spoke finally snaps. If the derailleur's limit screws are not adjusted correctly, the chain can overshift and fall behind the cassette and munch the spokes. If you need help adjusting your limit screws, I've linked a park tool video in the description. It's a similar issue for breakages further up the spoke. Generally breakage is here from snagging a stick or a root, but we also see damage from rubbing against another bike on a bike rack. And look closely and you'll find witness marks, both on the broken spoke, but also on its neighbors. When treating this type of damage, we'll make a judgment call as to whether to replace just the one broken spoke or also replace other damaged spokes as well. Unless there are any serious gouges, we'll generally leave damaged spokes alone as it's really easy to upset the wheel more by replacing spokes than it is to leave cosmetically damaged spokes in place. Thick, heavy spokes generally stand up to this type of damage better than thin, light spokes do. When selecting spokes for your wheel build, consider their durability and the trade-off against more lively ride feel that lighter spokes provide, especially on carbon rims. Since damage along the length of the spokes is not caused by anything we have control over, this is not a warranty issue. Of course we can still fix your wheel, and if it's only one or two broken spokes, we generally do this free of charge because we know that our high quality wheels don't require a lot of work when this happens. Before we shot this video, we asked what you wanted to know about broken spokes. And these were the top questions that came back. Our first question is why do tires puncture when a spoke breaks? Well, each spoke in your wheel is subjected to about 100 kilograms of force, which causes it to stretch about a millimeter. So they're kind of like really skinny springs. If a spoke breaks, it's often got enough force to turn the nipple into a small rocket, which can pierce the rim tape and cause a flat tire. To prevent this, on all of our heavy hitting mountain bike wheel sets, we double tape the rim, 
using a stronger first layer of tape, but then this does come with a slight weight penalty and it does make fitting tires slightly harder. Our second question is what to do if you break a spoke while out riding. Simply wrap it around another spoke to secure it and ride home. You definitely don't want to continue riding the wheel like this, but getting home shouldn't damage anything. And once you're back home, you can book a repair on our website and we'll take it from there. Our third question is why after a spoke has been replaced, more spokes continue to break until the wheel needs to be rebuilt. This happens because the wheel was built with poor quality spokes and or the build quality is poor. This leaves the spoke tensions too high, too low, or just really uneven. This will not happen with a good quality, well-built wheel, but often happens on cheaper factory built wheels. And of course on expensive or hand-built wheel sets, which haven't been built correctly. Our fourth question is, does a broken spoke mean I need a new wheel? With a high quality wheel, no. It's really unlikely that a broken spoke will have damaged the hub or the rim. If it's one of our wheels, we know the rest of the spokes will be tensioned correctly and it'll be easy to repair the wheel and bring it back to 100% durability. With a low quality wheel, probably, as that broken spoke is often a sign of cheap components or poor build quality and might be pointing towards a larger issue with the wheel. Quick plug for us, our contact details are on the website and we would love to build you some quality wheels. Hopefully that answers all of your broken spoke questions, but if not, it should be pretty clear by now that I love talking about this stuff, so ask away in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, you're gonna love our comparison of J-Ben and Straight Paul spokes, so go watch that, and make sure you get subscribed to our channel for more stuff you're gonna love.